Hey man, I thank everybody for uh, being patient with me. We were a little we were a little late tonight. Had some technical difficulties. Can't even explain what happened. But we thank God that we're finally able to go forward in clarity with sound and with uh, with visual pix pixels. So we're, we're we're excited. Get your pen and your paper, and we're gonna thank God that we finally get everything going. Okay, get your pen and your paper. And uh, let's get ready to get into the Word of God. Very, very, very good Word tonight. We're going to give God some glory for allowing us to finally get everything together. So we praise God for your patience. You know, patience, the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. So amen, we're going to let patience have her perfect work. So go to Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah chapter 50, and get your pen and your paper. We're going to go there. And so we're going to be ready to go. Amen. Amen. Come on. Uh, let's get our let's let, let's just get our minds fixated on God, and let's be ready to uh, receive a word tonight because this is a great word that the Lord has given, and I pray that it gives great understanding. Amen. Let's uh, pray. God, we thank you so much. Uh, we just give you glory and honor, God, for everything that you're doing right now. I thank you for every heart and mind that is listening. God, these are your people. You know their hearts, their minds, their concerns, their desires, their needs, God, their fears right now. Do what only you can do, God. Speak to their situation. Show yourself to be strong as only you can, God. We'll give you all of the glory and the praise. Surely there is none like you. We bless you right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, and we, I mean chapter 50, excuse me. We just need verses 7 through 10. It's a lot, but we're going to really get a lot done in them tonight. Amen. Listen to what it says. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. I want to talk to you about the servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord. And I have a proclamation to make tonight. So write this down. The time of the Lord's gathering, it has come. And the hour of deliverance for the remnant is upon them. Their time to move is here. Listen to what I'm saying. The time of the Lord's gathering has come. And the hour of deliverance for the remnant is upon them. Their time to move has come. Amen. Let's get let's get into the word and we're going to get some understanding. Listen to what it says. For the Lord God will help me. Understand this. The Lord needs you to know and believe that there is none that can establish you as his servant but him. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? There is none that can establish you as the Lord's servant but him. That does not happen by a degree, that does not happen by ordination, that does not happen by someone else witnessing for you as a servant of the Lord. The Lord God in heaven above is the only one that can establish you as his servant. And remember, except they see signs and wonders, they will not believe. So in order to get you to believe, the Lord will establish me as his servant, the prophet, in your midst for the purpose of causing you to set your heart on the ways of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And understand this when the scripture says, for the Lord God will help me. Understand, it is the help of the Lord that belongs to the servant. And what help does the Lord give the servant? The help that he gives the servant is that he prospers the servant's work in his name by his authority. He prospers the work of his servant's hands in his name by his authority. That is how God establishes his servant. 
He establishes the work of his hands in his name by his authority to establish him as his servant. Let me give you a couple of witnesses. Let's go to a few places. First place we're going to go is 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Listen now. Watch now. Watch. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verse 19 and 20. Listen to what it says. And Samuel grew, and the Lord God was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that, the Lord, that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Let me give you a couple of more witnesses. The next place I want to go is let's go to Haggai chapter 1. Listen now, watch, this is good, because God is teaching here. Haggai chapter 1, Haggai chapter 1. Listen to Haggai chapter 1. We need verse number 8. Listen now. Watch now. It says, go up to the mountain and bring wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says the Lord. So he tells them to go in his name and build the house. He will be pleased and be glorified in it. He glorifies his servant according to the work of his hands. So once again, understand the Lord establishes you as his servant by prospering, giving you help by prospering the works of your hand in his name to establish you as his servant. Let me give you one more place. Zechariah chapter four. Come on now. I want to give you this. I want you to get to Zechariah chapter four. Listen now. Listen. So he says, verse number nine, the hands of Zerubbabel shall have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. So understand the prophet goes forth in the name of the Lord. The Lord prospers the works of his hand in his name to establish him as his servant. Please understand, you first have to go forward in the name of the Lord. And then the Lord, the help he gives you is he prospers the work of your hands in his name to establish you as his servant. Are you listening? So please understand what the Lord is teaching you here tonight because he purposes to establish the truth. No man can establish himself as the servant of the Lord. Only the Lord can establish him as the servant of the Lord by exercising his authority and giving him the help he needs to prosper the works of his hands in the Lord's name to establish him as his servant. Are you following me? Let's, let's go a little deeper. Listen, he says, therefore, shall I not be confounded. Therefore, shall I not be confounded. So understand, when the Lord establishes you as his servant, there are benefits that you partake of that tendeth to establishment. I didn't say when you establish yourself, when the Lord establishes you as his servant, there are benefits that you partake of that tendeth to establishment. And here is the benefit. I shall not be confounded. Listen to this. Or I shall not be put to shame for the works or the acts that I do in his name because they failed. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Here's the benefit I partake of when the Lord establishes me as his servant. I will not be put to shame because the work that I did in his name failed. Are you understanding? That's why we have so much confusion in the church right now because God is not or has not established any one of his servants. So we hear these types of phrases. Well, maybe you missed it or maybe you didn't hear from God. Well, the devil is a lie. When the Lord establishes you, he gives you this confidence. He removes the fear of failure and you are sure that the work that you do in his name will not fail. Let me give you some evidence. Watch now. Watch. Let me give you, let me give you some evidence. Watch. I'm going to go right back to first Samuel chapter three. Watch now. Watch, watch first Samuel chapter three. And then I'm going to go another place. First Samuel chapter three. Listen, with the servant of the Lord, there is no failure. 
There is no work that he will do in his name that shall fail because the Lord has established him. And because the Lord has established him, that servant partakes of this benefit that he will never be put to shame for any work that he did in the name of the Lord because it failed. Are you listening? That's why you hear there is no failure in God, but no failure in God belongs to the servant of the Lord or the servant of God. Are you listening? An established servant by the Lord, not by man, because he will never have this fear of suffering the shame of failure for anything that he's done in the name of the Lord. Listen to what it says. It says, and the Lord did let none of his words fall to the ground. Not one of them failed. Are you listening? Watch now. I'm going to give you another place. Listen, this is the servant of the Lord, Isaiah 42. Watch. This is Isaiah 42. Listen to this. Verse number one says, Behold my servant whom I uphold. Uphold means to confirm or establish. And mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. Shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Listen to verse number four. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isle shall wait for his law. He shall not fail. So he shall not be put to shame for failure that the works that he did in the name of the Lord failed. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When there is no establishment, there is where the confusion in the church comes from. That is where the deceit in the church comes from. Because where there is no failure, there is confidence. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Where there is no failure, there is confidence. So when you are going forth and God has not established you, therefore you are sitting in fear that the things you declare in his name, you are hoping they come to pass, whereas the servant of the Lord is re has that fear removed from them because there will be no failure in any act or any work that they do in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Can we go a little deeper? Let's go a little deeper. Watch now. Listen, listen. Therefore, have I set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Listen now. He says, therefore have I set. This is, this is the benefit. Somebody say benefit. This is the benefit that the Lord gives to the servant whom he establishes by his power and his authority. Are you listening? This is the benefit. So when the Lord establishes you as his servant, he moves your heart to a different place and he gives you a confidence, a heavenly confidence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know how you hear the term when the Bible says exceeding joy. Okay, exceeding joy is a heavenly joy. But when the Lord establishes you as his servant, what he does is he moves your heart. Hear me. He moves your heart to a new place and gives you a heavenly confidence. And here is that heavenly confidence that he gives to his servant, that the words that are spoken in his name or the acts that he does in his name, the Lord will perform. He has this confidence from the Lord that the acts that he does in his name and the words that he speaks in his name, the Lord will perform. The benefit of having God establish you as his servant and the reward of being found worthy of being established as the servant of the Lord is the Lord gives you a heavenly confidence that your words that are spoken in his name in any act. That means deliverance. Are you hearing me? Deliverance being healing, resurrection, setting free, any act done in his name, he will perform. You have this confidence. Can I give you some witnesses? Watch now. Watch. Listen now. Watch. Let me give you a witness. The first place we're going to go is we're going to go to uh, Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Listen now. Watch Genesis chapter 21. 
Verse, listen now, listen, listen now, watch. Verse 22, listen to what it says. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Pakol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, listen now, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Everything that Abraham did in the name of the Lord, he had this confidence that the Lord would perform it. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Uh, watch, watch. And that confidence delivers you from me, pleasing men and God revealing his pleasure in his servant. Are, are you hearing me once again? Listen to what I'm saying to you. If you are not established by God, then all of your actions are about pleasing men. But if the Lord, why do you think the Bible said in John chapter 10, it says that for fear of men, they did not praise him. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. Well, the praise of the Lord occurs when he establishes you as his servant. Because by performing your word or performing or by prospering the act that you do in his name, he is revealing his delight in you and openly praising your service. Hear me when I say this to you. The heavenly confidence that God gives the servant, knowing that he will perform every word. And I'm sure after tonight, listen now, listen, God will perform every word spoken for the purpose of establishing his servant and giving his servant a heavenly confidence, therefore delivering him from seeking the praises of men and receiving the delight in the praise of the Lord and prospering the works of his hand. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you? When God honors your service and he performs the words that you speak, prospers the acts that you do in his name. Deliverance happens because there he has delivered you from needing the praises of men, setting you, sanctifying you, and setting you in a place where you can do the work of the kingdom of heaven without needing affirmation from men, but receiving the delight of the Lord and the heavenly confidence of God that he would perform every word you speak and prosper every act that you do. This is the benefit of the Lord God of heaven establishing you as his servant. So you got to go ask yourself the question, why do you think you see so many people in church seeking the praises of the people? Why did Jesus seem so peculiar that he never was after the praises of men? Why did Elijah seem so peculiar that he was never after the praises of men? Why did Elisha so, seem so peculiar that he was never after the praises of men? It is different. Difficult. It is impossible to prophesy to kings and presidents and fear them because you need their praise. The only way you can go confidently and prophesy truly what the Lord says to a king, truly what the Lord says to a president, truly to a man of stature is being established by the Lord as his servant, confident that he would perform the word that you spoke, needing not the praise of men, but finding joy in the delight that the Lord has chosen you and established you as his servant. That's why nobody's prophesying truly because they seek in the praises of men. Come on now. We're going to keep going. We're going we're gonna to go a little deeper. Are you with me? Are you with me? Somebody say amen. Are you with me? Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's go deeper. Watch now. Watch we're going to go deeper. Watch now. Watch. Watch. Listen. Verse number eight. He is near that justifieth me. Amen. L listen now. Watch now. Watch. Understanding. Understanding. The Lord needs you to understand. L listen. This teaching and this understanding, listen to the words I'm about to say to you, are for the transformation of of your heart, are you listening, are for the transformation of your heart and to grow your faith. Are you hearing me? 
These, this teaching, listen, he is near that justifies me. And the Lord needs me to cause you to understand that our relationship has changed. His and my relationship have changed and that he is with me and hear me and how he's going to establish his presence with me is through justifying my service. Are you listening? By prospering the works of my hand. Listen to what I'm about to say. To avenge me of the enemies of my faith through me obeying his commandments. Hear me when I say this to you. Justification is God avenging you of the enemies of your faith. That's why he, listen, in order to know it, you have to see it. Justification is God avenging you of the enemies of your faith. So that's why he wants me to say our relationship has changed and he is with me and he will make his presence known in my life through justifying my service by his power and avenging me. How will he justify me? By prospering the works of my hands and the work of my hands are speaking his words. So by prospering the works of my hands, he will avenge me of the enemies of my faith through me obeying his commandments. Because anytime you obey God and someone does not understand it, they become the enemy of your faith. Anytime you go forward in God or speak something in the name of the Lord and they do not understand it or do not receive it, they become the enemies of your faith. And God promises us that if we are faithful, then he will avenge us of the enemies of our faith. Let me, let me give you some examples. Are you with me? Let me give you some examples. We're going to go. Let's go to do. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter twenty-three. Exodus chapter twenty-three. Come on now. Exodus chapter twenty-three. Listen, what I'm about to teach you. Exodus chapter twenty-three. It's gonna get deep tonight. Exodus chapter twenty-three. Listen to what it says. Listen to Exodus chapter twenty-three. Listen now. Watch, 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 watch. Verse twenty-two. But if you shall indeed obey His voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. That is the promise of God to the faithful. Let me go, let me go to another place. Watch this. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Listen now. You've heard it all of your life. You just never understood it. Hear me. You've heard it all of your life. You just never understood it. Listen. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God. There it is. Understand. Listen, justification is God avenging his servant of the enemies of his faith. Are you understanding? Justification is God avenging his servant of the enemies of his faith. One more witness. Let me give you one more witness. One more witness. Isaiah 66. Listen to what it says. Isaiah 66. And when you, verse 14, and when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord, here it is, shall be known toward his servants. So how does God establish his servants? His hand is his power. So establishing a servant requires the power of God may manifest in his life. But understand now, understand, it says, in his indignation towards his enemies. So at the same time as he's establishing the servant by his power, he is also avenging him of his enemies by manifesting his power in his life and causes his enemies to understand that God has been the author of his steps and his actions. Are you hearing me? Justification. Is God avenging you of the enemies of your faith? So faithfulness always makes enemies. Establishment and justification avenges the faithful servant 
of the enemies of their faith. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? I'm teaching you real good. Are you hearing me? It is not my responsibility to avenge myself of my enemies. It is God's responsibility to avenge me of the enemies of my faith in him through my obeying his voice or his commandments. So therefore, the Lord says that I need you to understand I'm going to establish my presence with my prophet through justifying his service through prospering the works of his hands in my name. So here is how God's going to make his presence known now in my life through justifying the works of by justifying my service through prospering the works of my hands in his name to avenge me of my enemies. This is the time of justification for the purpose of establishment and for avenging of a servant's enemies. Somebody say amen. Come on, God is teaching real good. Somebody say amen. God is teaching real good. Let's 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 go a little bit deeper. Listen now, watch now. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. Write this down because I need you. Because God is teaching and he's teaching really well. He's teaching good. Understand this. Write this down. God's ways are not our ways. Take your hand, wipe it across your forehead and change your thinking. Please hear me. God's ways are not our ways. So please understand. Listen, when God establishes his servant by his power. Understand, the only thing that establishes the servant of the Lord is the power of God made manifest in his life. Not a degree. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Not a degree, okay? Not somebody pouring some oil over your head and calling you a prophet or calling you an apostle. Not somebody coming behind you and saying, that's the prophet or that's the... Uh -uh. No, are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Watch now, watch now. God establishes you as his servant by his power. Are you understanding? That's why you saw Jesus go to John the Baptist and the spirit of the Lord fell amongst him, uh, fell, fell on him for the purpose of what? Endowing him with power that by that power, he would be established as the servant of the Lord. That's why you saw Moses. Before he went down into Egypt, God endowed him with power that the people would receive him as the servant of the Lord according to the power of heaven operating in his life. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Listen now, watch. You got to choose you this day who you're going to serve. Are you going to believe people that keep telling you they're the servant of God and there's no evidence of power? Are you going to watch God manifest the truth in your presence and believe the truth? Are you listening? Watch now. I'm teaching good. I'm teaching good. Watch this. God's ways are not our ways. So now we're going to move into when God establishes his servant. Let me share something with you. I don't want you to miss this. An established servant, write this down, write it down. An established servant requires those that interact with him to change their thinking. Are you ready? An, an established servant requires those that interact with him to change their thinking. Watch now, because when God establishes a servant, you have to choose who you're going to stand with. Are you going to stand with God or are you going to be his enemy? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When God establishes a servant, this is how he thinks about it. Listen to what he says. Listen to this. He says, he says, who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. When God establishes his servant, gives you evidence that he is with this servant, he expect, his expectation is for you to make a decision 
or who you going to stand with. Are you going to stand with God or are you going to be his enemy? Are you understanding? Things change greatly when God establishes his servant. That's why you heard Jesus teach the apostles. He said to them, those that are not with us are against us. Why would you say that, Jesus? Because God has established me as his servant. Therefore, the evidence of his power operating in my life requires that you either stand with me or you become my enemy. Let me give you some evidence. Watch now. Watch. God is teaching you real good. Listen now. I'm, we're going to get a little deeper in a minute. Watch. Watch this. We can go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5. Listen now. And you got to see, you, you got to understand there's a purpose. There's a purpose for establishing you as his servant. So how many people have been walking around telling you the, they the servant of the Lord? Yet they lack understanding of the purpose of the Lord of being established by the Lord. Just stop and think about that. How many people you got running around here telling you, I'm the apostle of the Lord. I'm the prophet of the Lord. I'm the evangelist of the Lord. I'm the pastor of the Lord. I'm the teacher of the Lord. Yet, they lack understanding of the purpose of being established by God as his servant. Are you listening? Are you listening? Watch now. Watch. There's a purpose for establishing you. Are you hearing me? There's a purpose because establishment brings order and clarity. Are you hearing me? Establishment brings order and clarity. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Establishment by the Lord brings order and clarity. Okay, watch. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go somewhere, and then I'm gonna come back to this. Watch now. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter sixty. Isaiah chapter sixty. Come on now. Go to Isaiah chapter sixty. Go to Isaiah chapter sixty. Watch this. Isaiah chapter sixty. Watch this. Watch. 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 Verse number four. Listen to verse number four. Verse number four says, "Lift up your eyes round about and see." All they gather themselves together. They come to you. So the Lord's going to cause them to come to his servant, right? Listen, an established servant. He says, thy son shall come from far. Thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Here it is. Then thou shalt see and flow together. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you? Flowing together or moving together is being in order. But that order comes through God establishing his servant. Understand? Watch now. Watch. Because where there, listen, where there is no establishment of heaven, there can be no heavenly order. One accord is heavenly order brought to fruition by heaven establishing his servant. Are you listening? The only reason the apostles were on one accord is because they followed an established servant who set them in order before he left. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? So why, why do you think you heard Jesus say to them, he said to them, will you also go away? Because the established servant, God's expectation is you have to decide if you're going to stand with God or if you're going to be the enemy of God because you have the evidence that God is in your presence. And if you refuse the evidence, he sees you as his enemy. If you receive the evidence, then you stand with God according to the evidence he's given you that he's with the individual that he established by his power, which is evidence evidence of his presence. Are you listening? Watch. Watch. God teaching good. God's teaching good. Watch now. Watch. Listen, listen. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse 12. And David perceived 
that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people, Israel's sake. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Watch. He established him for the benefit of the people to cause them to be sure that he was with David and causing the people to choose if they would stand with David according to the evidence. And if they refused the evidence, then they became enemies of God. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? God does not think like us. You have to understand that. God does not think like us. You need to get it out of your head that God thinks like us. When he establishes his servant, everything changes. His expectations change. Are you hearing me? That's why Jesus said, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Come on, watch now. Let's go, let's go a little bit deeper. Verse number nine. Let's go, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Listen now. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Listen to what I'm about to teach you. Watch now. Listen to this. Watch. Once again, God's ways are not our ways. God does not think like we think. Are you following me? Listen to what I'm about to say. When God establishes his servant, the purpose is that he may accomplish the will and the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding? When God establishes a servant, the purpose is that he may accomplish the will and the purpose of heaven. So in a, when you make, when you come against the servant, an established servant of the Lord, you do not just come against that servant, you come against the kingdom of heaven and its purpose. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm going to say this again. When the Lord establishes a servant, the purpose is that that servant may accomplish the will and the purpose of heaven on earth according to the office that heaven has established them in. Let me, let me give you some evidence. Watch now. Watch. 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 Listen to this again. Listen again now. Listen again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse number four. Listen. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the owl shall wait for his law. So his purpose is to set judgment in the earth. The Lord declares he shall not fail. So therefore, get what I'm about to teach you. Now listen, now, because this is good. This is good. So once the Lord establishes that servant as the servant of the Lord, the purpose is to accomplish the will or the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, if you come against him, listen to what the scripture says. Therefore, if you come against him, you do not come against just him. Listen to what I'm teaching you. You come against the will of the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, you become a enemy of the kingdom of heaven, not the servant. Are you listening? Therefore, you become an enemy of the kingdom of heaven and not the servant. And here it is. Watch now. When God establishes him, how he defines the enemy changes. Are you listening? How he defines the enemy changes. Because, understand, when you were speaking against the servant, when he was obeying the voice of the Lord, you were coming against his faith in God. I'm teaching good. But now, once the Lord establishes him as his servant, and you come against him, you do not come against 
him, you come against the will and the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. And right here in this scripture, the Lord defines very clearly what an enemy is. Watch this. And what an enemy is to the Lord that comes against an established servant is anyone that puts their mouth, that puts their mouth on the work that he is doing in the name of the Lord or in the name of the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, understand now, the Lord judges differently when he establishes his servant. Let me give you some evidence. So you just don't sit there and say, you just talking prophet. No, I'm not. Watch, watch. It's in the Bible. You just didn't understand it when you read it. Watch. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Watch now. Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Listen now. Because hear me when I'm saying this to you. This is the Lord's expectation. When he establishes his servant by his power and his authority. Once again. An established servant of the kingdom of heaven is established by power, not by a degree, not by a piece of paper, not by a license, not by somebody speaking up for you. It is done by the power of heaven manifest in your life for the purpose of establishing you as a servant of the Lord. Watch now. And once they're established, Hear me. Once they are established, established, the purpose, watch, they established for the purpose of accomplishing. Write that word accomplishing down and circle it. Accomplishing. That means finishing. Finishing. Let me let me show you something. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to uh I'm gonna go to first chronicles. First Chronicles. Watch this now. First Chronicles 28. Watch this. Watch. Listen now. This is God. This is God. When you when you get done, you 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 do your own homework and you ask yourself. Watch now. Listen. First Chronicles 28, verse number 20. Listen to David. Talk to Solomon. He is teaching him from experience. Listen. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed for the Lord God. Listen now, even my God, listen, will be with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Listen to what D David told Solomon. He says, Solomon, the only way Solomon could build a house was that the Lord established him. That was the purpose for the power of wisdom working in his life. But he said to him, he's not going to fail you. You are going to finish. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to finish. And you're not going to see to it that you finish. The Lord is going to see to it that you finish. Because the Lord established you as his servant. And as his servant, you partake of this benefit. That listen, and the only way that God can ensure that he finishes the work that he has given him is that understand he become an enemy to the enemies of the work of the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to say this one more time. When God establishes his servant, the purpose is to finish or accomplish the will or the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. And when you come against an established servant, that's why the Bible says they could not take him for his hour had not come. Are you hearing me? 
But when you come against that servant, you don't come against just him. You come against the will and the purpose. Now, this is why God defends him. Because you come against the will and the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. And now on this level, how God defines an enemy changes. And how he defines an enemy on this level is speaking against the work of the kingdom of heaven. Watch. Numbers chapter 12. Watch. It's here. It's here. It's in a couple places in the Bible. I'm going to show it to you. They so well hidden. It's so wonderful. Watch this now. Watch. Watch. Listen to this. Numbers chapter 12, verse 8. Verse 7. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all mine house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. In the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Listen to what God says. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant? Listen to how God judges them based on how they deal with an established servant. The Lord says, you should not even be speaking against the work that he is doing or against him because when you come against him, you come against the will and the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you another witness. Come on now, I'm gonna give you one more witness. Watch now. I'm going to give you one more witness. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Watch now. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. I need verses 31 and 32. Matthew chapter 12, verses 31, 32. Listen now. Listen to this. It's in red. Watch now. Those that know me know this. It's in red. So if it's in red, who doing the talking? The prophet. My mama said this to me the other night. She called Jesus the prophet. I was like, you got it. You got it. Who's doing the talking? The prophet. Listen to the insight or the secret that the prophet is sharing with the people about himself. Watch. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blaspheming shall be forgiven, uh, sh and sin and blaspheming shall be forgiven unto men. But the blaspheming against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the power of God, the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So when you come against an established servant, and what establishes that servant is the power of the Lord, then you come against God. And God does not see that as coming just against the servant. He sees you as coming against the will and the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. And in Isaiah chapter 20, this is, this is how he deals with them. They shall be discarded. They shall be removed. Are you hearing me? They shall be discarded. They shall wax old like a garment and the moth shall eat them up. They shall be discarded and they shall be removed. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Understand now, what God is teaching us is he's bringing order back to the kingdom of heaven on earth and restoring honor to the established servants of the Lord. Are you understanding? Because where there is no establishment, there is deceit and confusion and no honor. And there can be no work of heaven on earth. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on now. I got, I got one, last, one last scripture to go. This is it. This is it. Watch now. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. All right, watch now. Watch. Understanding. Listen. Listen. This is this. God would not have. God does not want you to be ignorant. Hear me. He does not want you to be ignorant. He wants you to have a confidence. 
Are you hearing me? A confidence about godliness. So he gives you, he needs you to have an understanding of his purpose for establishing his servant, the prophet. Are you hearing me? See, godliness doesn't sound like we sound. It sounds so different because when the Bible says he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Glory is power and power is supplying of needs. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you? Are you Listen, I always say this. Watch this. A revelation feeds. A secret changes lives. A revelation feeds. A secret changes lives. Well, understand, power it satisfies and supplies need. So listen, understanding the purpose of establishing my servant, the prophet. Listen now. Here it is. He says, listen, the first purpose for establishing him is to establish my voice or my mouth in the earth. Let me, let me, let me say this so you get this real good. There's not one individual. Hear me. There's not one individual that God will establish as a servant that does not understand their purpose for God establishing them. And it will never sound like anything that makes sense to the carnal mind. Are you hearing me? It will always challenge the carnal thinking. It will always challenge natural thinking to change. If the renewing of the mind is required, how do you think the renewing of the mind happens? It happens through God sharing godliness and causing you to have to change the way you think about God. Are you hearing me? So understand, there's not one individual that heaven will establish as his servant that does not have a good understanding. What is a good understanding? A godly understanding of the purpose for establishing them. And that purpose will challenge the thinking of those whose trust is in the world. Are you listening? What? So the purpose, he needs you. Listen to God. He needs you to understand the purpose for establishing his servant, the prophet. The first purpose is that he may establish his voice or his mouth in the earth. Are you hearing me? I, that he may establish his voice and his mouth in the earth. Secondly, listen now, watch now. The second purpose is for deliverance. Hear me, for deliverance. The second purpose for establishing him is for deliverance, to deliver those that presently dwell in darkness. And how he's going to establish his servant, the prophet, is by his power and his authority. Listen to what I'm about to teach you. It is important. It is mandatory. It is required that he establish me by his power. If he does not establish me by his power, he cannot accomplish his purpose in your life. Are you hearing me? He cannot accomplish his purpose in your life. So the purpose for establishing his servant, the prophet, is first to establish his mouth or his voice the Lord's mouth or his voice in the earth. The second purpose is for deliverance, to deliver those that presently dwell in darkness. Are you listening to me? To deliver those that presently dwell in darkness. So my ministry is deliverance. My work is deliverance to deliver the people from the darkness that they presently dwell in according to the power of heaven that will be working in me. Are you hearing me? Watch now. Listen. And it's according to that power. Listen now. That the Lord needs you to trust in and stand with him. Are you hearing me? 
It is according to that power that the Lord needs you to stand with him. When he establishes the prophet by his power, he requires that you put your trust in that power and stand with him. Hear me when I say this to you. Deliverance is going to come by the word of the Lord. He will establish his prophet. And according to that word, it is according to the power that he will establish him. It is according to that word of the prophet that you will stand with the Lord. Deliverance will come by the word of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Deliverance will come by the word of the Lord. So I want you to understand the Lord wants you to know deliverance is amongst you. Deliverance is here and deliverance will come by the word of the Lord. And the Lord, once he establishes his servant, requires that you put your trust in the power and be delivered according to your trust in that power and stand with God. Remove yourself from the darkness and according to the power made manifest, stand with God. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say this one more time. The purpose of establishing his servant, the prophet, is first to establish his mouth or his voice in the earth. Secondly, to deliver those that presently dwell in darkness. And according to the power that is used to establish the prophet, the Lord says to trust in that power and stand with him. Deliverance will come by the word of the Lord according to your trust in the power that established the prophet. Deliverance is here. Somebody say amen. Deliverance is here. I want to go back to one thing what the Lord just brought back to my attention. I want to go back to this real quick. I want to go up. But I want to go back to verse number seven. And I want to talk about confidence again. The benefit of being established as a servant of the Lord. Because I don't want you to miss this. God moves your heart to another place and causes you to have confidence that he would perform every word that you speak in his name or every act that you do in his name. And I just want to give you two more scriptures that you can go over these. Watch this. Listen to this. I want you to see the benefit of God establishing you as his servant. First place I want to go is 1 Samuel chapter 9. Watch now, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Listen to this, listen to this. Listen to this, here it is. Verse number six says this. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. Here it is. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure we can show us our way that we should go. The last place I'm going to take you is Psalms chapter one. Watch this, Psalms chapter one. Psalms chapter 1. Listen now. Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. You know it. You just didn't pay much attention to it. Verse number 3. Watch now. Verse number 3. Listen to what it says. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Watch now. Listen to what I'm saying to you. So, the benefit of God establishing you as his servant is that he moves your heart to a new place and gives you a heavenly confidence that everything that you do in his name, every word you speak in his name, every act you do in his name, that he will perform it or prosper it. That's where you get, surely it shall come to pass and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper because these benefits are given to the established servant of the Lord that they have this heavenly confidence that every work they do in the name of the Lord or every word they speak in the name of the Lord, 
that it shall surely come to pass. All that they do shall surely come to pass. And hear me when I say this to you. It is essential that they have this benefit, that they may accomplish the work or the will of heaven according to the office that the Lord has elected them and established them to occupy. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? Last thing I'm going to leave you with, I'm going to say this to you again. Listen now, deliverance is here. And the purpose for establishing the prophet is that the Lord may establish his voice and his mouth in the earth to deliver those that presently dwell in darkness. And according to the power that establishes him, that they put their trust in that power and stand with the Lord and receive the word of the prophet for deliverance shall come by his word according to the power working in him to deliver the people from the darkness that they presently dwell in. Deliverance is here. Somebody say amen. Amen. Go back over it. Listen to it a few times. But you'll get an understanding that only heaven can establish you as his servant. Only the Lord can establish you as his servant. You cannot and no one else can establish you as the servant of the Lord. And heaven establishes you by its power made manifest in your life. And the Lord's going to make his presence known in my life at this time through justifying the works of, by justifying me, by prospering the works of my hand to avenge me of my enemies. Somebody say amen. Amen. I thank God for you being patient with me tonight. I know we were a little late tonight. Just had some technical difficulties, but we give God glory for the word getting out because I really wanted this word to get out. I was just so frustrated that I couldn't even get it out. But I thank God that we have gotten it out. Listen to it and receive it. Expect a manifestation of the spirit of the Lord. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for everything that you've said here tonight. We bless you. We give you glory and honor for we are sure, God, that your ways are the right ways. We understand that your ways are higher than our ways, God. So, God, we acquiesce to your ways. Relinquish our trust in the ways of the world, God. Walk in the power of righteousness, expecting, God, you to manifest yourself in our lives. We give you glory and honor for all that you've said here tonight. We bless you. We praise you. Right now, in the resurrected name of your Christ, we do pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. See you next week.